Hello everybody, this week we're looking at a trio of road going rally cars from across the ages and we're beginning with this absolutely stunning 1974 Ford Escort RS2000. everybody, I'll level with you. I may have been born in Essex, but I've never really been much of a fast Ford fan. It's not to say that I have a strong dislike for any of them, they've just never done anything for me, ever. However, one look at this beautiful RS2000 and I am in love. I haven't driven it more than a few hundred yards, but it's actually a real pleasure to just potter about in. And frankly, it could be terrible on this road we're about to go down, and I would forgive it because it's just gorgeous. It sounds the part. This is the first installment in a trio of road-going, rally-inspired or rally cars. Truthfully, the RS1600 was probably the more peppy and exciting race oriented Escort of its day and that had what was essentially a slightly detuned Formula 2 engine by all accounts. However, when you put a detuned Formula 2 engine in a car, that means you really need Formula 2 maintenance. And so the RS2000 had a lower compression engine, was single overhead cam and made less power only 100 horsepower and 100 pound feet in stock trim but it was more reliable and i've got to say i don't know back in the day maybe people would have been particular about which model to get but right about now i am falling in love with this car However, this one is not entirely standard. It has been breathed upon. So rather than the original 100 horsepower, it's now making about 140. Let's see what she'll do, shall we? Work our way through this gearbox that I can only describe as snickety. And those uprated twin carbs sound awesome. That's a proper old school noise. You put your right foot down, you can just hear it going. Nom, 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 nom. Let's have some more. Now I suspect that the wheels need a little bit of adjustment because there's something of a wobble coming through this steering wheel at a certain speed. So I'm gonna not gonna go too fast, but oh that steering is direct. Really, really nice. It's just a shame that yeah. Clearly these wheels do need a balance. Everything else feels great though. It's comfortable and it's a small car. I mean, a, a really, really small car and I feel like I'm perched on top of these seats. There's zero space between my thigh and this pretty small RS badge steering wheel. You can't really see the Ford branding much on this car either. And it looks like originally it shouldn't have even had a stereo, but I think somebody later on has decided to fit what looks like the worst stereo I've ever seen. it into the corner and you realize that it's on skinny little tires and wheels and it'll move about under you at the lowest speed but that just makes it so much more engaging <sighs> I thought this was going to be a real disappointment it's not what you can't see is the smile of my compatriot who's going to tragically have to drive this car for all the drive-by shots I know he wasn't looking forward to this one because this one's really sort of outside his era of expertise, but for a first classic Ford experience, he is in for a treat. The last old Ford I drove was a dad's Mark 1 Capri, and that was 
pretty awful to be honest. Felt like everything you'd expect a Ford to be. And in all honesty, this has got much of the same stuff. Some awful, cheap looking trim. Plenty of gauges and that, but no real useful markings on them to tell you what any of them mean. Nasty Bakelite looking switches. But let's be honest here. If you're picking holes in the interior of a car of this type and of this age, you're just doing it wrong. This is about the drive, pure and simple. And on that front, this thing scores impossibly highly. Now, if you want some numbers on this car, I've made a best guess. Here they are. But this is not a numbers car. This is a pure experience car. In the real world, what I've just hopped out of is a Clio 182 Trophy. Fairly nippy hot hatchback from 15 years ago. I'm quite confident that this is not as fast as that. And you absolutely cannot throw it into a corner with the same sort of carefree abaddon. But you can have serious fun in this thing. It looks, it sounds the business. <laughs> weights up beautifully but because this car is so light even at parking speed the lack of power assistance not a problem in the least pedals nice they're all a little bit on the light side even the clutch but the gearbox is the big surprise because old fords sometimes you drive them and the, the gears are and not where the gear stick promises them to be. You know, sometimes third will be over there and the first is right over there behind that hill. This is epically good. Really, really nice. I'll be honest. I was driving this thing purely on a looks basis and I was fully 100% prepared to forgive it entirely, without question, without reservation, without hesitation for any sort of dynamic misgivings. And it's not the roomiest, the biggest car, but that makes it all the more fun and means that it's relatively low limits can be explored safely on the road. It's a riot, absolute riot. These wing mirrors are even useful, and that's good, because they are a recent addition. It didn't actually have any at all on it, but unless you knew, you wouldn't know. They look period correct, and everything about this car has been done nicely. All of the tuning has been done in a period correct way with cams and carbs and all that sort of old school stuff. It's awesome. This is not a fast Ford that I can finally say I like. This is a fast Ford that I love. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you all for the next one. Bye bye.